my name is James and welcome to the Easter Egg Hunter where for the next handful of minutes we're going to indulge in many facts, mistakes, references and like always secrets that have popped up across the Mario Kart series. However, Mario Kart 8 will be for another day. Once you have gathered a gold trophy in all of the four open cups in Mario Kart Super Circuit, the special cup will unlock, allowing you to finally have a crack at Rainbow Road, where hanging in the night sky is Bowser's Castle from Paper Mario on the N64, which makes a cameo. You can also spot Princess Peach's castle on the top as the clouds break at certain points along the track. By either selecting a coin or balloon battle and making a selection of Woohoo Town in Mario Kart 7, head to the east of the illuminated building sporting a clock near the fountain and look out to the lighthouse perched on the cliff, then look at the rocks below where you can find yourself a rupee. You would think it would be visible from Woohoo Island Loop and yes indeed you can take a gander at this exact cliff, however here it has been filled in. For a brief time, let's visit Mario Kart Wii and hop onto the Moonview Highway, one of my favourite tracks being played with one of my top Mario Kart picks, and not just because it's based off Captain Falcon's vehicle from the F-Zero series. Anyway, while you're here, check out the number plates that rest on the passing traffic as the cars all possess PAL plates. Toad's Factory Lorry has a one-up on it. The Coconut Fruit Truck features a World 1 Dash 1 sign, but the best one is located on the Moo Moo Dairy Vehicle as it reads SMB3 as in Super Mario Brothers 3. You can also find the same plates on the vehicles in Mario Kart Double Dash, but the previous instalment also contained a few extra ones to observe, with references to stars and Super Mario Sunshine. Game manuals are really a thing of the past nowadays, which for many of us is quite sad, and yes, most games come with an online guide and tutorials of some description generally as you play the game, but having something tangible was cool and there were always tips and interesting things to read up on. Anyway, here are some tips from Nintendo encouraging gamers to cheat, if you weren't already. Yeah, so by flicking to page 17 of the Super Mario Kart manual titled How to Win a Battle Mode, check out the bullet points 1 and 4 as they read Look at the colour of the barriers on your opponent's screen to determine where they are. And always keep an eye on your opponent's screen. In a similar scenario with Mario Kart 64, manual turn to page 12 under the section of Verses and take note of the following passage. Two to four players can play the versus game choosing their favourite characters and courses. Players have their own screens to watch, but to make the most strategic use of their items, players should check the other player's screen and pay attention to their opponent's movements. For another look at Double Dash, here are some small details to look out for, as on the first major bend of Luigi's circuit, you can find an A-grade mansion from Luigi's Mansion. This is the only time I have ever seen it, since I was never ever good enough to collect 100 million Gs or 150 million Gs on the PAL version to obtain it. In Waluigi Stadium, check out the crowd members as amongst the cast rest Donkey Kong Jr. and Boo, both of whom have been retired to the sidelines for this instalment. In fact, Donkey Kong Jr. has been there ever since since the very first Super Mario Kart, while Boo, as an item, has actually made four appearances in total. And for another small part, the L and Luigi's hat on the game's front cover is backwards, and yes, it's been talked about a fair bit over the years, and unless I've not read something explaining why this happened, then I'm going to assume, as it's so obscure, it could be a reference to the game's hidden mirror mode, unlocked once you have won the All Cup Tour in 150cc mode. Then again, it could just be an ultra mistake. <laughs> Luigi's Raceway, known as Luigi's Circuit, and the Japanese version of Mario Kart 64, there are many advertising boards surrounding the first bend of the track. From a sign containing Mario to Yoshi 1 to Luigi P, Cooper Air and Shot. All plays on real life brands such as Marlboro Cigarettes, AGIP, an Italian oil company, Mobile One, providers of synthetic oil, Goodyear tyres and finally Shell, suppliers in petrol. All of which were removed or altered in 
some way for the European, American and Australian versions, possibly due to copyright issues or just that they were potentially seen as advertising these very brands. Very clever indeed, but more than likely would have landed Nintendo in hot water, much like the champagne drinking scene in Super Mario Kart. Towards the end of each lap, you will also zoom past the orange ball featuring the number 64, which was a play on the 76 gas stations. It was changed to blue elsewhere, but it can always be seen on the course selection screen in all regions. It might also be worth noting that the AGIP inspired sign can be spotted in Mario Kart 7 and Mario Kart Wii, though they were watered down compared to the original Japanese sign. Upon the start of Piranha Plant Slide, or also known as Piranha Plant Pipeway in Australia, a part of the Star Cup in Mario Kart 7, just ease over the start finish line and point your vehicle 45 degrees to the right, to which you can spot in the same shot a cloud and a green bush. They are actually identical in shape and is a reference to the way clouds and bushes were used to decorate Super Mario Brothers. Between the Japanese and international versions of Mario Kart 64, there were a few other differences apart from the advertising, as there were a total number of six voice actors as opposed to the three that were used in the international games. And for some reason in the Japanese version, Charles Martinet, the voice of Mario's name has been spelt incorrectly. We were also treated to this introduction. Welcome to Mario Kart! while in Japan, they had a bunch of kids screaming Mario Kart. There are noticeable differences to the menus, and weirdly, Fromp's laughing in Bowser's Castle, as in Japan, he sounded like this. But we were treated to this. <laughs> which is actually Wario's voice slowed down. Within Mario Kart Double Dash for the last time is one feature that was completely unused in all regions apart from Japan, as in 2004, Club Nintendo Japan held a competition where entrants could take to four different tracks, Luigi Circuit, Baby Park, Mario Circuit and Yoshi Circuit, together their best time trial times. Once the entrants were happy with the results, they were told to punch in left, right, left, right, X, Y, X, Y, Z upon the retry screen where a code would pop up. Contestants were asked to register this code and also save their times to a memory card for proof if they were winners, though apparently there was only ever one winner who took home all the spoils. Such a contest was never utilised anywhere else in the world, but these codes still exist in all versions, and if you visit this very site, the link is in the description, you can see how it works. For Mario Kart 64, head for a battle opting for the Big Donut, and once underway, guide Mario towards the section where the green and yellow barriers meet. But using my footage for reference, reverse your character in question up to them and look down into the dark void beneath the battleground where you should be able to spot two misplaced item boxes. Also, have you ever finished 4th or 5th overall on the Mario Kart scoreboard? Well, for me, I can't say I ever did, but I did enjoy watching this ending cutscene for the first time that you may have also totally missed.
To bring this episode to a close, complete a cup in Mario Kart 64. It doesn't matter which one, but when the results screen starts appearing, don't continue to the awards ceremony at Peach's Castle. Just simply leave the game sitting there for 54 minutes or 64 loops of the results screen music, where an unintentional piece of hidden music will play. I say unintentional as it was intended that two different tracks would loop twice for a total of 100 seconds and then swap to the second piece. But due to a binary counter bug, the second track ended up playing after every 64 loops of the first piece. Hey everyone, this is James, and if you ever want to know what else I get up to, then you can always find and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you're new to the channel, then why not subscribe and become part of the journey as we explore secrets, Easter eggs, and glitches every single week. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.